it is dada okay okay so thank you very much once again mashu bhai for the nice introduction and uh, honorable president ncci executive members of ncci members of ncci a very good afternoon to all of you and perhaps mashu bhai has spoken about me he said many good things about me but honestly i had been uh, doing as a practicing member of icab for last for the 12 years in public practice so and i'm really happy to be associated with ncci since its inception and every year i'm so happy that ncci invites me for this discussion session so today what we are going to talk about is like the salient feature of this brand new tax act which is known as income tax act 2023 and also the finance act 2023-24 because the bill was approved back in apnar 26th of june uh, last month and what i tried to do is like i tried to be as accurate as possible depending on the government gadget whichever has been published but nevertheless if you see any discrepancies between my slides which will be shared with you by ncci please refer to the original text and i know uh, you have seen the national budget for this year which has already started from 1st of july and what we have seen is like the budget size has been increased by 15.33% to 761000 crores and out of that the revenue earnings have been estimated to 500000 crores and where we can see a significant 16% increase as compared to last year so out of total revenue earnings nbr is supposed to contribute by like 430000 which is a very significant contribution on overall revenue perspective and we can also see a growth projection of like 16.22% as compared to last year from 370000 crore to 430000 crore and we are always maintaining this deficit budget of around 5 to 6% so this year is also not an exception so the deficit is there and which will be financed through like the banking sector and other sources of you know uh, finance and the gdp growth has been targeted to be around 7.5% which was 6.03% last year and also the inflation is supposed to be within 6% although we know we had been undergoing serious inflation pressure over last 3 to 4 months and if you look into the nbr revenue uh, collection target in the top right hand of of my presentation there you can see out of that 500000 400000 430000 will be collected by nbr and non tax receipt is around 70000 crore but if you look into the expenditure part the expenditure is like 436000 which was 390000 last year so the expenditure is really increasing i should say to a great extent and we can also see the government is planning an adp of like uh, 263000 so the adp spending is supposed to be increased from 227000 although we have seen the spending for annual development program as of march was not so significant and as i have mentioned earlier that this deficit is going to be financed through external and internal sources and external is borrowing through these all those partners and development agencies and the domestic sources mostly come through selling of sanchay patro or you know through the banking sources now if you look into the collections so far i have seen like how much nbr could have collected as of now then what we can see on an average if you look in the bar then until last few years you can see like during the covid period the total collection was gone down like to 72% as compared to the budget so this was the time where we have seen a downfall in the total revenue collection by 3000 crore but this has increased to 260000 63000 in last year and in in 2021 and in last year it was 292000 which was around 89% of the total uh, collection target and for the first time in the history of bangladesh uh, the total revenue collection has crossed 300000 so based on the available information that i have collected the total collection is around 325000 for this year the year that we have completed which is 88% as compared to our target but nevertheless it is approximately 10 point some percentage as compared to last year so despite all the challenges which has been mentioned by the honorable president and cci the 10% growth is really really significant and good in terms of if you see we do not have any major reforms coming in any sector and all the businesses are not doing so well as compared to like all this war and post covid situation 
So now, keeping in mind the target of 430,000 as compared to 325, whatever we have collected in last year, this is a growth of around 35%, which seems very, very challenging. We know there are a lot of initiatives have been taken in the new act and proof procedure where they are estimating that this 35% growth is achievable. And if we look into the segment of the taxes as of now in terms of direct and indirect taxes that you can see, then uh, what you will see in terms of income taxes, it is 35% and in terms of uh, VAT, it is 38% and the indirect taxes is around 26%. And if we look into the last year, we can see a major shift from last year to this year. Income tax contribution will go up by 3% and this will be compensated basically because we can see there is a lower revenue projection from indirect taxes, especially from import duty and supplementary duty. If you have gone through the budget speech, then you will see, you know, keeping in mind 2026 LDC graduation, our dependency on indirect taxes, especially on custom duty and regulatory duty needs to be reduced. So that's why there is a significant fall of 3% revenue collection target drop in this year from these indirect taxes. And then if you see uh, how what we have achieved, like as compared to last year budget of 122,000, the National Board of Revenue collected 112,000 crore as income taxes. VAT is still higher from 136,000 to 120. The import duty collection was not so good in these years. You know, all these import restrictions, you know, put us in a bad shape. Otherwise, it could have been more than 100,000. So in total, it was a kind of a shortfall of around like uh, 45,000 to 50,000 crore as compared to the target. And perhaps uh, this presentation included with the hope that the new t income tax Act has come over into place and this income tax act has been introduced so we can say like the income tax ordinance was there in 1984 and the act is in 2023 which is 39 years after the ordinance was introduced but initially income tax act was there in bangladesh since 1922 so technically we are getting this law after 101 years you know as a uh, income tax act so what I'm going to take you through is mostly based on certain specific measures. Like if you look into the law, then you'll see there are some investment and business friendly initiative, which is which will definitely play a vital role in, in reducing the cost of doing business and also the environment in doing business. And also you'll see there are some automation related initiative taken and to reduce the arbitration power of the assessing officers as well. And this new law has introduced certain international best practices and if you look into the law, the law has been written in Bangla and there are a lot of simplicity and transparency initiative taken and tax refund related procedure has been stringent and there are some changes with regard to withholding taxes and most importantly, there are some adverse impact or challenges that is going to be uh, that is going to impact the corporates as well as individuals. And I would also like to touch upon on the penalties and fines where you'll see sharp increase in fines and uh, penalties and also the other amendments. And last part would be regarding transition health and you know expectation that we used to have. So what are the business friendly initiative taken in this new law? So technically, uh, we had to file 29 returns in a year for all those withholding taxes. So now at a corporate assessee will not be required to file 29 returns. Instead of that, they'll have to file 12 returns. So the number of return filing will be reduced by, by more than half actually. So we expect this to reduce the cost of doing business in Bangladesh. And then as a business in the previous law, like in 1984 law, the provision for allowable expenses or deduction was very scattered in different provision. But this new law has structured all the admissible expenses in to certain category. For general deductions, they have given a list. For specific deduction, there is a list. For bad debt related expense, there is a list. And for financing expenses, they have given a very clear proviso or clear list. So out of this new area of admissible expenses, you will see uh, one of the expenses that you come across is workers profit participation fund. So this provision was not there in the earlier law. And we used to end up with a lot of dispute like the tax authority did not allow this as an admissible expenses. And perhaps last year, they brought this under the list of inadmissible expenses. So this sort of specific categorizations will allow you to deduct your expenses as an eligible expenses 
and will reduce a lot of disputes being you know uh, uh, or arising out of the discretionary power by the assessing officers and then uh, all the multinationals specifically you know you see if you if we work with like we have seen they are remitting royalty technical know-how fee and other fees to their you know uh, service providers so all these expenses had a cap of like 10 to 8 percent of net profit so now uh, this 8 percent of net profit in uh, you know, subsequent years, like in after three years, has been eliminated. So now one can, you know, claim 10% of net profit as an admissible expenses, irrespective of any number of years. So the businesses will be allowed to claim more as an admissible expenses. Although you wanted this to be aligned with the BIDA guideline or uh, forex guideline, and also foreign travel expenses, there was a cap of 0.5% of turnover. So now it's saying that 0.5% turnover is okay. But if there is a justified business expenses, you can claim that entire expenses as an admissible expenses. And for motor vehicle, one could have claimed 25 lakhs as allowable depreciation. So now this limit has been increased from 25 lakh to 30 lakhs. So this will allow you to claim more depreciation. And there are some changes in uh, you know uh, software amortization. But most importantly. When we used to file a tax return, and if an assessing officer is disallowing certain expenditure, claiming that this is not a revenue expenditure, rather capital expenditure, they did not allow us as a deduct deductible expenses. So the now law, now the law is saying that all these expenses can be claimed on a straight line basis of 10 years as an admissible expenses. And also the amortization schedule has been separated from the depreciation schedule. And most importantly, we all know that we need to follow IFRS for preparing financial statements. And what used to happen is like if you prepare the financial statement following IFRS, the assessing officer in many occasions, they used to disallow the expenses. Most importantly, if you look into foreign currency loss gain, then you'll see in majority of the cases where we have been associated as a tax consultant, if it is a foreign exchange loss, it was not considered as an admissible expense. And if it is a gain, they used to estimate the gain you know, to a higher amount. So now the law is saying if, a, if there is a foreign currency loss and if it is like a realized loss that can be allowed as an eligible deduction, as well as the IFRS 16, you know, uh, actual rent would be considered as an admissible, depreciation and interest will be considered as inadmissible. So all this provision will allow you to claim the expenses in accordance with the law and will reduce all the lack of clarity that you have got in our income tax ordinance. And with regards to automation and reduction of arbitrary power, in the earlier law, there was only provision for obtaining ETIN or in some cases for the individual, you could have filed on online return. But for assessments, appeal or tribunal, the provision was very scattered. So now a separate chapter has been dedicated for, uh, I should say, the like e-processing of this tax process. So which has categorically mentioned all the processes that an SEC need to face. So we believe if NBR can develop the system, then we can reap the benefit of this automated system. And previously, there was uh, no SOP on audit related process. And even there was some process, the timeline was not very specified. So now the audit of the you know, SSEs have become very specified and with a very specific timeline has been introduced in the law, which allows you to know actually where you are and by when they will have to complete the process. So this will make us more accountable and we can also reap the benefit of unnecessary query being asked by the authority and if we look into the international best practices one of the key best practices that have introduced is like share based payment previously there was no guidance in our income tax ordinance like how share based payment will be taxed in the hands of the SEC. so now uh, whenever this uh, share based you know option this share option will vest and you are exercising it so at that point in time, the difference between the fair value of the you know, options and cost of your acquisitions will be considered as a salary income, which gives you a very clear guideline how this will be considered. So again, we are expecting that the valuation of this fair value at exercise date, you know, and we will have to come up with a rule. Otherwise, it might become very arbitrary. And in the earlier law, we did not have any provision regarding thin capitalization. So now, an SSE cannot claim entire expenses as admissible expenses for, uh, for all the interest they charge in their PL. So there is a limit like if you take a loan from the related party, only uh, interest up to 15 lakh you can claim without any question. 
and for the remaining part they will develop a formula based on ebitda you know based on this ebitda because most of the ratios are based on calculated on ebitda so if they bring up the rule then we'll be able to see how much of these expenses can be claimed as a uh, you know eligible deduction so we are also questioning like for inter company loan uh, whatever loan we are bringing in bangladesh we need to take approval from the bida and also they are giving a very specific threshold for uh, for the interest part of it and an ssc is also required to file transfer pricing return whether the interest has been charged or on ongoing basis so this sort of thing will increase the burden on the taxpayer and in the previous law we did not have any provision on nt avoidance so now uh, with this new provision general nt avoidance rule the uh, commissioner will have got the power if an ssc has like uh, misused any tax schemes or tax benefits so uh, all those tax avoidance would be questioned nowadays and then in 2022 finance act we have seen uh, the finance act brought a provision of merger which was not there now with this new act they have brought in like demerger related provisions so it means if a demerger happens then if the shareholders are at least 15 75% in the from the old company to the new company then the transfer will be considered as a tax free transfer and also proportionate basis unabsorbed depreciation or losses can be adjusted with the new demerged company which allows you uh, to introduce you know or to have the merger more tax friendly and we have also seen like in the earlier law only income of alternative investment fund or issuer of mutual fund was exempt and now this provision of like like special purpose vehicle or fiscally transparent entities will be exempt from payment of taxes this includes alternative investment fund not issuer of mutual fund rather the mutual fund itself real estate investment trust and also exchange traded fund so all these fund will not be required to pay taxes on their income and if i take you through simplicity and transparency then you will see the law has been written in plain bangla and this is based on the directive of the high court so the language has been made very very clear and in a very simple bangla language and if you look into the law then you will not see there are lot of proviso in this new law in the earlier law there were so many provisos that if you are going to read a law it is very difficult to understand the original provision so reduction of this Uh, excessive provision will make you know uh, the reader to read it very easily and also all the related heads of income and expenses deductible for those income have been clapped into specific chapter so now if you would like to know uh, what are the in income that will be constituted as income from business or what are the deductions an ssc claim can claim as an expenses if you browse chapter 5 then you can you easily get to know about all the income and deduction previously it was very difficult because you had to run back and forth to determine income and as well as the expenses and in the act you see the act has included certain formula within the uh, within the sections or subsections and this sort of formula makes your life easier because you can do the calculations very easily uh, by you know using the method given in the formula and also right now uh, what the government is targeting like all the ssc's will have to file tax return online means uh, online means online as well as universal self assessment online is the target but now they are trying to make universal self assessment first so when you are making universal self assessment so at that point in time you are self assessing yourself so in this case you know unless the file is selected for audit you don't need to face the assessing officer so the exceptions will be there for a company and a person living in bangladesh but for uh, opc bank insurance and financial institutions you know uh, you know uh, they'll have to file you know a normal basis uh, you know tax return filing and in the previous law there was no scope for deregistration so now the law has brought in new provisions that a tax ssc or an ssc can file for deregistration because we know there are a lot of people who are leaving bangladesh sometimes when people dies their pin number is still active and if the company is wind up or they are not continuing their branch office or liaison office in bangladesh still their pin is active so in this case this deregistration will allow you to deactivate from the nbi database and 
this grossing up mechanism uh, has been introduced for the first time again and we have seen this in international best practices too so this happens mostly when we are making payment to outside bangladesh where the vendors are agreeing on a net basis so at that point in time we had to pay taxes or we need to bear the tax expenses in bangladesh and sometimes this happens for local vendors as well so now you can gross it up depending on the effective rate of tds and as i said the refund guidelines have been made easier so now if you are filing your return under universal self assessment the assessing officer will have to process the return and after they have processed the refund return the uh, the tax refund will hit in your bank account within 60 days even if it fails they can still claim the refund so now nbr will have to work with central bank and also the treasury department like the oc nag office how they are going to process the refund and the related rules for uh, electronic fund transfer of this refund so we believe the refund process would be very very easier if this new law is implemented and with regard to withholding taxes we have not seen any significant changes except for few things like if you are having intercompany loan means a, a loan within the related party and then you will have to deduct 10% tax on the interest previously it was tax free and tax deduction at source on wppf has increased from 5 to 10% and payment to surveyor fees will attract 15% taxes instead of 10% and the central bank will deduct tds on interest income of wppf gratuity fund superannuation fund provident fund or pension fund so so the tax deduction will reduce the income of those funds so what are the adverse impact or challenges that we are anticipating for the business so if we look into the corporate tax point of view then you will see this is a list of areas where we can see this is going to affect our businesses one of them is setting up losses so if we look into the uh, earlier provisions of the law or general principles of the law it's like if you have losses from the same businesses if you have got losses then you can set it off with other businesses but again if you have got other income then you can set it off with your business losses as far as the 1984 law was concerned but right now with the introduction of new provision you cannot set off the other income with the business losses which means you'll have to pay taxes on the other income on its entirety although it is being generated from the same entity so this is going to increase cost of the business and also if you look into the definition of perquisite it says uh, perquisite includes incentive bonus as well so previously incentive bonus was excluded from the definition of perquisite which means the limit that you have got 1 million was excluding this perquisite uh, incentive bonus so now if this is included then your effective tax rate might go up nevertheless there was a provision of like uh, excess disallowance on 30j that in excess of 10% of your profit whatever incentive bonus you pay that will be considered as an admissible expenses that has been repealed in this new act however if this happens and the perquisite limit exceeds then effective tax rate will definitely go up and what we have also seen like minimum tax on carbonated beverage has been increased from 0.6% to 5% which is 830% increase in for the beverage industries and also for the cigarettes the minimum tax rate has been increased from 1% to 3% so what is happening so like if if a carbonated beverage seller they need to like pay this 5% tax on their gross receipt they'll have to make at least 17% profit on their top line which is significantly high and this will definitely you know force them to increase the price if they need to increase the price then technically the demand for the product will go down and technically the production will be lower as compared to earlier so through this the government is going to uh, lose the money instead of getting excess amount of revenue and since if, if there are fdi companies in this sector and this will discourage them for investments in bangladesh and one of the key things that you will see that in earlier provisions like there was an sro in 1976 which says like if you are bringing foreign currency fund into bangladesh whatever interest you pay to those you know lenders those interest was tax exempt so nbr has withdrawn the, that sro which means interest that you pay to those entities will be taxable now so if it is taxable if there is no dta the effective tax rate will be 25% and if there is a dta then the effective tax rate will be 
around 11.11%. So this is going to increase your finance cost you know, going forward. And we have also seen that surcharge has been introduced for an SEC having more than one car. And this SEC includes corporate as well. So if a company have got more than one car, the company will have to pay this environmental surcharge for the additional car. And right now we know that a corporate is required to pay when they are paying to their vendors, they are deducting taxes, they are you know, uh, submitting a monthly return to the government authority, submitting quarterly return. And also in the uh, like Finance Act 2022, you know, requ uh, tells us like we'll have to collect some PSR as well. So now if you are not collecting PSR from all those entities that your entire expenses will be disallowed. So previously there was only two heads. So now in this new provision under section 264, there are eight heads where technically you'll have to collect certificate from all those vendors, you know, because if, do, if you do not have those proof of submission of return, your entire expenses will be disallowed, means you'll have to pay taxes on that disallowed amount. So this is technically going to substantially increase your effective tax rate of the company. And there are some areas where uh, the, the there was a concept of final tax in our earlier law. So now this concept of final tax has been withdrawn and now this will be considered as a minimum tax. I tried to give an example for land related cases. So now this is going to increase by 265% as compared to earlier law. And in case of personal taxes, then we know that, you know, through finance tax, there are some reductions, but individuals are going to be affected. So to start with now, uh, if you have got private recognized provident fund, private approved gratuity fund or superannuation fund, all these funds will have to file tax returns and they are, they are considered as a taxable entity. So if it is a taxable entity, previously it was tax exam and they, they don't need to require file tax return. So if they now need to file tax return, then whatever tax was deducted earlier under 1984, like 1 million on 10 million taka interest. So the impact was not too bad, but right now when they will be have, they'll have to pay 1.75 million more, then this will increase actually, uh, this will increase the tax liability so which effectively reduce the fund balance for the beneficiaries. So the beneficiaries will get lesser amount of funds, but this will have deeper impact for the gratuity fund because if you need to pay taxes from the gratuity fund, the employer will have to finance the fund by paying additional contribution to the fund, which means the liability for the gratuity fund will increase for the company. And previously, LFA was considered as an exempted income once in every two years. So now that exemption has been lifted, which means LFA will become a taxable component every year. So this will have an impact for employees. If I've done a calculation where the monthly gross is 82,500, so this sort of employee will not be affected for elimination of this you know, uh, LFA. But if that uh, monthly gross exceeds 82,500, for example, if it is 162,000 monthly, then the total tax liability will go up because the taxable income will move from 1.6 million to 1.78 million. And income from workers profit participation fund was exempted up to 50,000 taka. So now this has been withdrawn. Income from dividend from mutual fund or dividend from, from any listed securities were exempt up to 50,000 taka. So those have also been omitted, which means you'll have to uh, pay taxes on the entire amount you know you receive from all these funds. And we have also seen there are some restrictions in I should say uh, uh, restriction because the definition of government securities includes Shanchai Potro and there is a limit of five lakh. And if you are investing through mutual fund in the share market, then the total investment tax credit will be eligible up to Taka 5 lakh. And for all those government securities, including treasury bill bond will be eligible up to 5 lakh. But if it is a traded bond, means it is uh, traded in the stock exchange, the limit is full. And DPS has been increased from 60,000 Taka to 120,000. So with all this introduction, you know, you, you can get lesser tax, you know, rebate, even if you are investing more in you can invest more, but maximum, uh, you know, eligible investment that you can consider is taka 5 lakh. And also in the previous law, maximum amount of tax benefit you could have claimed was 1.5 million taka. You could have eliminated as, you know, uh, tax liability. So 
So now with this new law, you can claim maximum 1 million taka as a tax rebate, which is a reduction of like 500,000. But this will not impact an individual whose monthly income is, you know, uh, less than 2.8 million. So this is for the high end people, only they will be affected for these changes. And I have seen like a lot of, uh, uh, I should say, increase in penalties and fines. And so far, I know working with the Nordic communities, Nordic communities are very compliant company. I believe they are not going to have all these penalties, but you need to look for these two specific changes. So like you need to file your tax return online. Otherwise, you'll have to pay 4% simple interest at, for 24 months. So try to file your tax return within the tax day. And if you are filing amended return, file it immediately, because if you are filing amended return, you'll have to pay 5% interest on the shortfall on a monthly basis. And in terms of other changes, if if you are having an exempt entity, you know, if you have got two entities working in Bangladesh, if one entity is tax exempt and another entity is taxable, then the, you know, uh, the entity who is making transactions because to reduce their you know, tax liability. So for them, the difference between the transaction price with tax entity and the fair market value will be considered as an income from other source for that entity. So which means this sort of internal transfer pricing provision is there only for the transactions with the tax exempt entity. And I have already talked about PSR. And if you are transferring share in Bangladesh, like from local shareholder to local shareholder, then you'll have to give a valuation report to the authority and you'll have to pay 15% capital gain tax was there earlier. So now the requirement is like the transaction before entering into the, before doing the transactions, you must ascertain the fair value of the share transfer. And in, in the past, like if you are having, if you are a group of companies and then you cannot invest more than 50% in a startup company. So now this new act has eliminated that provision, which means the holding company can hold more than 50% share. And then the, the startup company will not lose those startup, you know, facilities that are available in our income tax ordinance. And as a chamber, what we expected, we expected that uh, the government will introduce English version of that because the law was there for last 101, 101 years. So all these stakeholders, they are all used to in English version. So we expect the government to introduce the English version soon. And we have seen already the government has introduced a few rules regarding TDS, but other rules, especially the tax return form and uh, other forms have not been developed yet. So if these are not being developed, then if a person would like to file tax return, they will not be able to file the return because the form is not available. And if we, if I take you to the remaining highlights of the Finance Act, I have not seen any significant change or any change in terms of tax rate. The tax rate has remained as it is. Although we wanted like this cash rate, uh, this uh, cash transaction limit will be stringent this year. Uh, so if you'd like to claim that 2.5% tax rate benefit, you cannot spend more than 3.6 million in a year. And also you'll have to collect everything through your banking channel. So in reality, I have done you know, one reality check where I checked a report with Morgan Stanley. They reported like in India, they took eight years to make them cashless from 4.4% to 76%. So it, it really requires time, but again, if the other authorities, they come forward, then all the companies will be able to enjoy this reduced tax benefit. And in terms of TDS on certain goods, especially for the uh, payment of supplier for extra high voltage power, so their TDS rate has been reduced from 7% to 3%. For the tobacco company, their TDS rate has gone up. And for individual, the income tax ceiling uh, the initial ceiling has increased from 3 lakh to 3 lakh 50 for a male. For female, it is 3 lakh 50 to 400. So the initial ceiling has increased by 25,000 to 1 lakh 25,000. So this will definitely give some relief to the mid level taxpayer. And for individuals who have got net wealth of more than 3 crores, they had to pay surcharge. So with this new Finance Act, you can see that up to 4 crores, you don't need to pay surcharge. And remaining slabs has remained as it is. And I have not seen many changes in terms of VAT and custom duty, but I'd like to touch up on a few points on VAT. So now if you are purchasing vehicles, you cannot claim VAT as an input tax credit. So it means 
if you cannot claim input tax credit the cost of your business will definitely go up and in case of contract manufacturer that contract manufacturer musoc 4.3 must include the raw materials they are using if they are using their own materials otherwise they will have to show service charge in their 4.3 declarations and if you are paying your electricity bill through digital payment gateway that will be considered as an eligible invoice of you know musoc 6.3 you don't need to collect any predefined format so this will make your claim you know better because this was not there in the rules but this was there in act and for input tax credit for import of service now you'll have to show uh, your you know output tax separately in your vat return to claim that input tax credit as, as reverse charge mechanism and if you are going to claim partial input tax credit for taxable supply and exempted supply so the calculation has been stringent but you can see you can only claim on a proportionate basis partial input tax credit and if you have got like uh, if you are going to amend your vat return and if you have not claimed input tax credit earlier so you cannot get it done by amending the vat return so please be careful while claiming the input tax credit in your vat return so do not claim this while amending the vat return and now what you will see in in many cases we have seen when the vat authority issues a notice and finalizes the demand so initially they raise a demand on the amount of vat and later they issue another show cause for penalty so now the authority will have to issue the original you know demand and as well as the penalty notice together which will definitely make your life easier you don't need to wait for 6 months or 2 years that vat authority will come and again issue you a show cause letter and there are some extension of exemption facilities for certain you know this was there earlier so uh, the government has extended it for one or two more years so there are a lot of changes but i try to cover as many as possible keeping in mind importance from your end but i believe you know uh, i could make you understand and thank you very much again for your patience hearing over to you mashur